ladies, I often hear women say, I should, should I sell? Or why should I sell? Or I shouldn't have to sell. You don't. You don't sell. Probably not for the reasons that you're thinking though. Let's discuss on the other side. Brian Green, Optimal Happiness Guy, is a renaissance man, a part of the talented tent. Published author, Amazon, number one, new release, Optimal Happiness, Love Ain't Never Been Enough. Certified in the kitchen at Becoming Handsome Growth. Entrepreneur, a bodyguard. some different understanding into this romantic settle uh, marriage dating selling topic the word that I hear come up quite often with women and actually selling all right so let's start with looking up the word settle see if we can get on the same accord on the same page all right just a couple couple definitions of the denotation of the meaning of the word so settle means to resolve or reach an agreement about. Pay off a debt of some kind. Um, to place so as to stay is another meaning. What else is on here? Um, so that's good enough. Those are some of the meanings of the word settle. All right. So what we're looking at today is what it actually, what, what we're actually getting at here is what it means to sell in terms of, of a relationship, romance, marriage, committed exclusive relationship. And when we look at the phrase, what it means to sell, or, or women say, I, why should I settle? I shouldn't have to settle, or should I settle? The completed phrase is, settle for less. Why should I settle for less? I shouldn't have to settle for less. All right. And when you think of it in those terms of settling for less, it brings into the question of um, what you could have or what you, what are your viable options. All right. And this is where the women's logic usually falls apart because when you don't have any viable options, you're not actually selling, all right? You have options, you just don't want the options that are presented to you, uh, which is problematic in and of itself and for women and for the advancement of black people uh, as couples and families. But we'll get into that at some point, maybe in another video or discussion. All right, so I'm gonna offer up a series of analogies, a couple of analogies, to see if you can follow my logic, my train of thought, my thought process, and see if it helps you to position your thought process regarding selling a little bit differently to help, all right? So the, the first analogy, if you will, is of a job, all right? Think someone that's unemployed. You don't have any job, you need a job. You're behind on your car note, you're behind on your mortgage or your rent, and you just can't live day to day without any finances. So you have to have some kind of job, some source of income, all right? So think you've applied to 10 jobs. Nine of those jobs has hit you with the email response that I've gotten when I've applied for jobs. Thank you for applying, your resume and background, were impressive. The competition for the job that you applied for was fierce. We appreciate you taking the time to apply with us. But if, however, at this point in time, we will be not moving forward with the application. I've gotten it. You've probably gotten it. 
It sucks. So, nine of them hit you with that message. Nine out of the ten. There's one company that says, hey, we would like to move forward with, with a uh, verbal offer or a formal offer that offers for $50,000. Now, you think you should be making $100,000 based on your self-analysis, maybe your education, your experience, whatever you have going on. That's what you think you should be making. 100K minimally versus the 50K offer. Now, from a financial standpoint, it makes sense to take that $50,000 a year job. It's not the 100 k you want, but it's half of what you want, which is better than none of what you want, which is not having a job. But what often happens, if you apply women's logic to this, you don't take that job. So you stay unemployed, you don't have any job. Now you're losing your house, your car, you can't pay your bills, it's just getting worse for you. As opposed to taking your best offer, you don't want to settle. But is it really really settling if you don't have any better options or better offers in this case? That's what we're discussing here. <clears throat> All right, let's think, uh, let's go to example number two. There's, let's say there's hypothetically, there's two men, humor me. There's two men in the whole world that want, whole wide world that want you. Man number one is Denzel Washington, my guy Zell. I love Zell. Guy number two is myself. Now, all things considered, that are relevant to men, social status, resources, finances, fame, Denzel is a better option. But you choose me over Denzel. That would be subtle. <laughs> but, but that's usually not what happens with women. Just want to throw that analogy example out there. Now, a more elaborate example of this, think the movie Notebook. For those of you that hadn't seen the movie Notebook, it's a love story. It's about a, a man and a woman, of course, that um, were in love as young people, got separated. I think she went to the Air Force or something. And he was sending her letters, trying to get in touch with her. But her mother was intercepting those letters and not giving them, giving them to her. Then her mother introduced her to a, a wealthy man that came from a wealthy family. And he wanted to marry her. Ultimately, she ended up linking back up with the guy that no, I don't think he had a job. That he lived, worked on his farm, and just lived his best life, best life. She ended up choosing Noah without a job or any finances over the man that came from a wealthy family that had wealth himself. She said, but she had two options, two viable options, that both wanted to marry her, be in a, com a committed, exclusive relationship with her. She had two options. That makes it it's selling from her, on uh, for her. <clears throat> but if you don't have any viable options, it's not settling. This is what women often get wrong. Here's an, another example. Think um, you got a 2,500 Accord. It got you through your um, college and onto your early adulthood. And it has a lot of sentimental value. Uh, it's in good condition. It has about, about 200,000 miles on it good condition, no major accidents, just a pretty decent running car. It has a lot of sentimental value to you, got you through college, got to your first job. You just think the world of it. So you're moving on from it though, you have another car now. So you put this 2005 Honda Accord in the driveway, put a for sale sign in the windshield, and people start to come by ask, asking about it. How much for the old five or cool? You say a million dollars. They say, oh, it's overpriced. Go on. Guy number two, three, four, five. All, how much? A million dollars, overpriced. Move on. Now you're up to guy number 20. Oh, no, millions overpriced. Move on. So you start to say, well, what's wrong with these people? They, I know, I know the worth of this car. I know what it brings to the table. I know the value that it brings. Why don't they see it? Right? This is what women do with themselves. So then you say, well, let me get, let me see. Let me look on Kelly Blue Book. How much for 05 on the core is in similar condition? Kelly Blue Book says $5,000. You say, man, I was trying to sell it for a million dollars. It's only worth $5,000. All right, so I need to get rid of it. I need to sell it. Drop the price from a million to 5,000. 
guy 21 comes along, how much for the old 504? Uh, I'm selling it for $5,000. All right, I'll give you 4800 for it. Boom, take 4800 car sold, right? What happened was you had to call over price and you had to get calibrated for the market. The car has a market value. You were overpricing it on the market, which are the car buyers. Women have a market value and the market buyers are men. So you have to get calibrated to the buyers of the market and what they want, what they find value. Just because you find value in something, in the 05 Accord, in, a, in yourself, doesn't mean the buyers on that market see that same value. You get properly calibrated. You're overcharging, you're overpricing yourself. You're, and you get properly calibrated to the market of your actual value that you bring to that market. Somebody will buy you up, take you off the market just like that. All right, so women think you sell, but you don't sell. No one sells. You actually get what you're going out here. Can you command these things? That's where it is. That's the meat and potatoes. Do you command these things? If you do, great. You'll get them. If you don't, you won't. And it's just as simple as that. So let's, you know, I hope this helps women mindset of thinking you're selling. Well, why should I settle? Why I don't I shouldn't have to settle. You don't settle. You get what you garner. What are you garnering? That's what you have to analyze. What am I garnering? Garnering out here. All right? So you go away from that thought process of selling and focus on what you're garnering and why. That's what a power is. Information. What can you do to, to change, to garner more of what you want? This is where your mind shift comes in at. Not about selling. What, are, what am I garnering and why am I garnering that? And how do I garner better, more of what I actually want to garner? So I uh, hope this video helps. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications so when I post more videos, it'll let you know. And comment and reach out to me uh, on Instagram, Optimal Happiness Guy, and uh, we can have a conversation and I can help you. I can help you in these areas. So hopefully this video helps. Uh, tune in. Catch you next time. Brian Green, Optimal Happiness Guy, is a renaissance man, a part of the talented tent, published author of Amazon, number one new release, Optimal Happiness, Love Ain't Never Been Enough, certified in the kitchen at Becoming Handsome Growth, entrepreneur of bodyguard.